If you wanted to see some vicious anti-British, anti-English, anti-Brexit hate-mongering propaganda, you should pop along to the City Arts Centre run by Edinburgh City Council. Obviously, when you visit a council or government-run gallery or museum in Scotland, there's a fair chance you're going to come along some sort of political messaging within it. For example, in the Riverside Transport Museum in Glasgow, they feature that key vehicle in the history of transport, the rickety caravan from the Fastlane CND Peace Camp. I mean, it's blatantly obvious. The reason that that's there is the council wants to promote a particular political message. I mean, Edinburgh... Museums and galleries stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. So it's their policy to align themselves with a controversial political campaigning group. But anyway, so let's move on to these specific items that they've got on display in Edinburgh at the moment. And we'll begin by listening to the artist explaining what they're all about. Here is Rachel McLean. Often, I think, with my most recent work, Native Animals, it's about finding what's the kind of visual language for the kind of archetype or I guess stereotype of Englishness or Britishness and in some ways looking for the origin of that and then making something kind of slightly weird and left field out of it. So they're about summarising Englishness and Britishness and this is from the caption in the gallery. Employing a cast of animal-like characters reminiscent of those in children's stories, she envisages a series of sinister episodes examining the various motivations behind Brexit and its repercussions. So she's depicting basically Brexit supporters and what drives them. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see in that we've got the national anthem playing in these various grotesque characters so i assume these are illustrating either you know englishness britishness or brexitness uh, if you like uh, let's just have a look at some of the stills from the video i mean here's one here showing the i don't know english british brexit support or whatever chasing after trying to shoot them I and generally the idea is these grey figures are supposed to be foreigners or immigrants I think so Brexit supporters want to shoot immigrants or is it British people English people I don't know here's another one with the Brexit English British person having shot a lot of immigrants that proudly displaying them then there's this other character the same proudly holding up uh, this immigrant that is shot we'll come on to that character a bit later just to give you an idea of some of the other uh, work of this artist uh, she produced this which uh, is just perverted filth uh, but young artists in Edinburgh if you want a glittering career if you want to be on the path to the point where Edinburgh City Arts Centre buys your artwork and puts it on display this is the sort of way you build up your reputation produce this sort of disgusting material and you're well on the road to getting council taxpayers money in your pocket. But let's move on now to the actual two images from this film that Edinburgh City Council as I assume bought with uh, council taxpayers money and now has on display in their art gallery. So here's the first one. So we've got the picture of the sort of Brexit leader we assume and he's in a fire like a mystical figure and there's these other little creatures around virtually worshipping him. So the implication is that like the Brexit supporters are just some sort of blind mob, uh, you know, worshipping this grotesque figure. The figure himself is depicted as a cross between a pig and an orc, uh, I would say. The message across that um, hop off home, that's assuming there's a sort of anti-immigration message. Is that a really fair representation? of the, the Brexit side, were they actually saying to people currently in Britain they wanted them to go home? Was it not more? I mean, not some Brexit supporters didn't have immigration as an issue at all. Wasn't the main uh, issue about um, getting control of immigration in the future? Wasn't it made clear during the campaign that it wasn't actually to remove anyone that was already here? Wasn't that the main thrust? So is that a fair representation? Uh, obviously not, but that's the least of the problems, is it? That's the least of the problems. The real problem is representing people of different political views as a cross between 
pigs and evil monsters. Right, then we've got the next picture that uh, Edinburgh City Council has bought and has on display. I mean, there's a lifeboat there. I guess that's supposed to be some reference to illegal immigration. Again, we've got people who've been killed, shot or whatever, some uh, uh, immigrants, we assume. Then you've got the, the Brexit, English, British people, whatever, the British flag there. Uh, and the, the appearances that they're sort of celebrating that, they're delighting uh, in the death of these other people. Now, that's sort of propaganda. Those sorts of demonizing, dehumanizing images. I mean, they're, I mean, they're nothing new. I mean, they've been going on throughout human history. I mean, here's one of an you know, anti-Semitic image of a Jew portrayed as a pig. Here's another anti-Semitic poster. You know, Jews are murderers. Yeah, we've seen it all before. So when I've been around the City Art Centre, seen the various exhibitions, I've, I've seen those pictures. So that I'd just go and offer a bit of feedback at the information desk. There was a couple of young ladies there. So obviously it's nothing to do with them that they chose them. So, so I just said, could I give you some feedback for you to pass on, if you wouldn't mind? Oh, yes, yes. So I said that they're sort of grossly offensive, depicting basically Brexit supporters as a cross between pigs and uh, ugly monsters, evil monsters. And uh, one of the girls behind her mask quite clearly laughed, just laughed at it. So I thought, OK, I'll write to Edinburgh City Council instead, if we can't rely on the staff to... Uh, even behave civilly, let alone pass on a complaint properly. So here's my letter. Dear Edinburgh City Council, I wish to complain about the purchase and display of grossly offensive and extreme political propaganda at the City Arts Centre. I refer to the two works by Rachel, Proclaim, Rachel McLean, purporting to depict Brexit Britishness showing a union flag clothed pig stroke orc. From these two pictures and the rest of the Native Animal series, it is obvious that Rachel McLean is expressing extreme anti-Brexit sentiment and seeking to demonise and dehumanise Brexit supporters. It is hate-mongering propaganda at the most reprehensible extreme. To be clear, the Council has purchased and displayed images portraying Brexit supporters as a cross between pigs and ugly evil monsters. The other imagery implies that they are bloodthirsty. If some embittered and hostile activist wants to produce such intemperate, abhorrent and abusive images, so be it. I will never approve of such de dehumanising and hateful material, but accept that some sadly descend to such depths in political causes. What I do object to, though, is such work being bought at council taxpayers' expense. In addition, to display such extreme political propaganda in a public gallery is to facilitate the demonisation and dehumanisation of a significant section of the population in Scotland. Would the council display images depicting Muslims as ugly, bloodthirsty pigs, drug addicts, councillors, immigrants, Remainers, Green Party supporters? I hope not. The council should uphold standards of decency and respect towards all citizens, but is clearly unable to do so. Political biases overwhelm basic human values. In the gallery, will we ever see similarly offensive depictions of Scottish nationalists with English go-home banners? Of course not, because it doesn't suit the political narrative of the council. Some of Miss Maclean's other work is twisted and sexually perverted, and anti-British and anti-English themes are apparent. Why ever would an SNP-led coalition want such works on display? To be honest, I expect a reply that defends these unsavoury and demeaning pieces as addressing contemporary issues or stimulating debate or such like, as if any degree of targeted offensiveness is thus justified. I expect that every person who deals with this complaint will share the perspective of the artist and utterly fail to see beyond their own political biases in order to apply universal human values of tolerance, fairness and respect. Please prove me wrong. If the work is intended to stimulate debate, I'm ready and waiting. I'd be delighted to debate the works publicly with the artist and or any representatives from the council or gallery. Sadly, I will be startled if this offer is taken up, and I fear that the real intention is to stimulate demonisation rather than debate. As a council taxpayer, may I ask how much was paid for these works? I look forward to your response. And when I receive a response... I'll let you know what they've got to say. I'd just like to offer something to help Edinburgh City Council just before we finish. Because when I went to the gallery that day, the main exhibition was paintings by Lorimer and they really were excellent. So the council staff who select 
artists to feature. I just like to offer them some advice. So if you look at this here, that's a, a fine piece of art. So that gets a tick. You should consider displaying from this artist. This is grotesque political propaganda. So that's a no, that's a cross. Again, that's a beautiful piece of art. So that gets a tick. Uh, that's perverted filth. So that artist gets a cross. Okay, hopefully that can clarify things. You can maybe use that little video clip in your training sessions in the future. Now, someone might ask, would I have complained, would I have made this video if the people on the receiving end of this aggressive, offensive propaganda had been Scottish nationalists or environmentalists or Hindus or Pakistanis? Well, to be honest, I probably wouldn't. And the reason for that is I probably would have dropped dead at the shock of it. Uh, but had my constitution withstood this startlement, then yes, I would have complained. I would have complained if any other group was being portrayed in that sort of way. So just to make it clear, the Scottish Family Party's policy on the EU is that we're neutral. Uh, Scottish independence, uh, we're neutral. But we're very clear on one thing. Politics should be kept in its place. Now, lots of councils around Edinburgh, the government as well, they just can't help themselves. They push their political agenda in what should be apolitical spaces. Now, what's going on this, in this gallery? To be honest, it's trivial compared to the rampant indoctrination going on in schools, but I still thought it was worth bringing to your attention. Now, if you think to yourself, oh, yes, I don't like that sort of thing in the gallery, that's why I vote Conservative. I mean, forget it. The Conservatives don't fight this sort of thing. They completely fail to recognise the way that countless institutions have been politicised, so the Conservatives can't even begin to tackle the problem. So if you're not happy with this being uh, displayed and paid for by Edinburgh City Council, then in the coming council elections in May, vote for the Scottish Family Party in Edinburgh. We're going to have candidates, I hope, in most of the wards, so you'll have a chance to express your opinion at the ballot box. And do join the Scottish Family Party as well. There's a link below.